All right, all right, all right. It's week two of sports reporting for the summer of 2018. Hope you all were able to get through everything last week and are starting to feel a bit more comfortable. Um, hopefully you're having a good summer so far and we're not working you too much. But again, this is a 16-week class that we're getting into six. Um, sports reporting is a very, very busy uh, life to live. And so you're starting to get a little bit of a feel for that, I think. A um, couple of housekeeping items. Number one, this Saturday, June 9th, is when we, are, when we are scheduled to meet at Silverstein Arena to take in the KC Phantom Indoor football game. Um, the game starts at 7. I have not gotten with Brad Zimmerman yet to finalize details. I'm thinking we meet at 3 or 4 up there, uh, get a tour of the facility, kind of see what they do, and then be able to shadow with them. But as soon as I get details from him, I will let you know. But I need to know by Tuesday at the latest who is going to be there because we're either going to have to get tickets or they need to get us media passes or whatever it has to have take place for us to be able to get in. I need to know who's going to be able to be there. Okay, so by Tuesday evening, uh, so let's say 5 o'clock Tuesday um, is the deadline. Let me know if we're a go for Saturday. Okay, I hope we can make it work. It should be a good time. should be a, a great learning experience. Um, and that's one of the things I try and build in this class is seeing different opportunities and different ways to be a sports reporter. On that note, Wednesday, June 20th at 10, we'll be meeting at Midco Sports in uh, Lawrence, Kansas. Midco, think ESPN on a much smaller scale. They do um, high school sports. They do some small college sports, doing live productions. They also have a studio show where they do kind of a wrap-up sort of thing. So um, that will be a really cool experience for us. A few years ago, we went to Spectrum Sports up in Kansas City before they went out of business, and Midco is very similar to what they are. Monday, June 25th at 9, we are meeting at Arrowhead Stadium to meet with B.J. Kissel, who is one of the Chiefs game day reporters, uh, works with Mitch Holthus a lot, and we get to do a tour of Arrowhead and see what the media would see there. I'm still trying to get us a tour of 610 Sports. Hopefully that will be next week, um, but I'm going to continue working on that one and I'll let you know, okay? I know, again, these tours are uh, they are not required, but they are a great experience for you, so hopefully we can take in as many as we can for that. Okay. All right. So this week, June 4th through 10th, we are talking about covering the sporting event. The sports focuses for this week are our sports foci for this week are cross country and soccer. And then you have one discussion board post. So you need to watch the lessons for week two about covering a sporting event. This has changed quite a bit since I was a sports reporter. When I was a sports reporter, you didn't have social media. Um, you didn't have the, the evening news covering everything. You didn't have as many sports channels that were covering everything. So while I was a sports reporter for the Sedalia Democrat, I would go out on a Friday night and cover a Warsaw, Warsaw High School football game. Or I'd go out in the middle of the week to, um, to Lamont and I would cover a basketball game. Or I'd go in the spring and I would go down to Sedalia and I'd, I'd cover a softball game, you know. And I would write up the game story. What happened? Who are the key players? What were some of the key statistics? How did things unfold? You don't see that as much today as you used to because there is so much television coverage, even in small towns. We stream right from our own department, the Warrensburg High School football games, with help from COCO, with the local radio station. They provide the play-by-play -play and the color commentary, and we provide the video. So people are watching the game, so they don't necessarily want to read about it as much. They've already seen what happened. So game, game coverage has changed a little bit. Um, in some ways, we see a lot more bulleted items. There, you know, the game story in itself is becoming much shorter because we want to hear more about the games within the games, the, the conflict between the wide receiver and the cornerback, or um, how the wrestler overcame some sort of obstacle to be able to compete in this particular match and then to win this match, those types of things. So you get a lot more sidebars especially with the internet, especially with uh, being able to have converged packages. So you might get a short game story, but then you might get a highlight video or, or a photo slideshow of different events that took, or different activities, different happenings that took place during the game. You might get a stand up with the head coach and get a little video to go with it. So you've got all these other pieces. But for this class, I want you to learn how to write a game story in the traditional sense. And so there is an assignment that goes with it. You're not going to have to go out and actually watch an event. I've provided the facts for you. These are actually in your book, in your textbook, the Joe Gisande Field Guide to uh, Covering Sports. Um, but there's, you have two options. One's a football game, one's a basketball game. 
I've given you the stats, I've given you some of the key information in it, and I want you to write a game story on one of those two assignments, okay? Um, go to your assignments tab on Blackboard and it'll, expl it'll spell that out for you. All right, okay. Then you have your sports focus with cross country and soccer. Make sure you do the assessments for those two sports. And then also remember you have your blog post and your blog post for this week is some facet of cross country or soccer that you find interesting. You know, with soccer, the World Cup's coming up here pretty quickly. Um, Sports Illustrated did a really nice piece on that. They did a nice, uh, nice story the week before on Jurgen Klinsmann, the former uh, coach for the U.S. men's national team. Um, but that's a big event coming up. And so you might give your assessment of you know, why U.S. soccer didn't make the World Cup or why they should have made the World Cup or what are they going to have to do to make it in 2022. So those are the types of things I want you looking at. And then finally, your discussion board post for this week is why a sports reporter? Why do you want to do this? Whatever facet that is, if you want to be a play-by-play -play announcer, if you want to write sports, if you want to get into sports PR, if you want to just make highlight packages and be behind the camera and you don't actually want to be in front of the camera, those are sports reporters too. Why do you want to get into this and what is it that really appeals to you? Okay, so you've got your, um, your sports story is due this week, um, again, about the football or the basketball. You have your assessments for cross country and soccer. You have your blog about cross country or soccer, and you have your discussion board. Again, I know it's a lot, 16 weeks into six, okay? All of it due by midnight Sunday. If you got any questions, give me a holler. And again, remember, by Tuesday at five o'clock, let me know if you're in for Saturday's tour of uh, Silverstein and seeing the Casey Phantom game. All right, have a great week.